What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Theology. My name's John, and today I want to talk to you about a common problem uh, that people have presenting the gospel. So pay close attention. This article is from uh, Grace to You from John MacArthur's ministry, and this person is Cameron Butel. And they highlight something that I, that I thought would be worth discussing. Uh, it's something that I think is really a stumbling block for many people in evangelicalism, and it's, it's what is the motive for God reconciling people to himself. Should we lead with that God is all loving and God uh, therefore is just waiting for people to come to him? Uh, biblically, this article makes the strong case that this person that is very well known is really purport, uh, purporting a soothing lie. In some fact, uh, malpractice for someone to present the gospel in this way because the wrath of God is one of the primary motives that the sinner needs to flee the coming judgment, the day of judgment. And the wrath of God was also dealt with on the cross. And so if we lead with just love and God loves you and, and you're so special to God without people understanding that they violated God's law and that they are in great danger of a very real place called hell, then we're doing them a disservice because uh, basically, we're making the gospel about them instead of about God's glory. And so you'll see this more and more uh, if you read through this article, which I will put a link and highly recommend. Uh, but biblically speaking, we must be very clear about what the issue is that humanity is facing. Uh, Charles Spurgeon has a quote that I really like, which is another reason I wanted to highlight this article. He says, brothers and sisters, if sinners will be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies and if they will perish let them perish with our arms wrapped about their knees hear their pleas imploring them to stop and not madly to destroy themselves if hell must be filled at least let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions and let no one go unwarned and unprayed for so in other words this motive is very different than what you hear in a lot of churches even a lot of well-meaning ministries uh, and the reason that people do this is they want to remove the offense of the cross. They want to display God as loving and thereby wooing the sinner. But God's love is demonstrated on the cross that while we were still his enemies, Christ died for us, the just for the unjust. It was God's good plan to demonstrate his love by dying on the cross, bearing the wrath that we deserve. So God's love is focused on the cross and in the gospel and when we try to separate that out and just say that well you're kind of you know you're just you're missing this piece and your life isn't complete until this uh, that may be the result of the gospel but that is not the issue that humanity is facing humanity is a rebel against God and humanity is in danger of hell and God's wrath and judgment. So this is a very inconvenient truth, but in fact, this is the biblical reality. When man rebelled in Genesis 3, this has been the war between God and man ever since. Now, God is not perplexed by this. God knows whom he will save. God will save his sheep. But uh, we need to rightly, rightly present the gospel. And David said this, God is angry with the wicked every day, Psalm 7 verse 11. So we need to have a better grasp on this. If you're someone that's sharing the gospel and seeking to make disciples, I highly recommend Ray Comfort. Uh, he's so kind and thoughtful, but he uses the law to bring the knowledge of sin. And when you do that, the person will better understand that the right judgment for their rebellion is a very sad but very real place called hell. Charles Spurgeon got it, and I would encourage you to read Spurgeon as well as MacArthur, as well as this full article, and make sure that when you present the gospel, you are presenting it clearly, accurately, and precisely with the correct motive. God's love is displayed on the cross, but his wrath and love meet. Grace and wrath meet at the cross. Also, one further plug, check out the most recent American gospel. It uh, highlights this issue when it talks about penal substitutionary uh, atonement, penal substitutionary atonement. It's the, the idea of what happened on the cross was a legal debt was being paid by Jesus for the sins of the elect, for those that God had predestined to save. And if you have an issue with that, uh, take it up with your Bible, read John chapter 6, read Romans 8, 28, and through 9, 20 or so. And the, the Bible is crystal clear on this, that God's grace is owed no one, and for his glory, he redeems guilty rebels. Now, this offer is available to anyone, and I pray that everyone does respond in faith and repentance. But 
Uh, unless God changes the heart, the person cannot respond because they don't want to respond. So if you have questions, drop a comment below. I'd be happy to talk with you. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hammer the